Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas. I hope that you had a good start into the new year. And this is probably a time where you personally, but also businesses, start to make plans for the new year. Now, something that might help you to do this is what if analysis. And inside of Power BI, there are what if parameters so that you can go through different scenarios and see what impact it will have. Now, let's have a look how they work in Power BI. If you're new to this channel and you want to learn everything about Power BI, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date. Now let's have a look at the example of today where we're gonna have a look at how to use what if parameters. Now in this video, we're gonna use what if parameters to make a forecast of how popular Power BI will be at the end of 21. Now from this chart, you can see that worldwide, Power BI is catching up with Tableau and already over to Click. Now with what if parameters, we can make adjustments to the growth rate for 21 and can say, okay, what if Power BI grows with, let's say 54%, how will that have an impact? And will it then overtake Tableau? Well, this depends on how fast Tableau will grow. So here we have, again, another slicer for which we use what if parameters. The end user can play around with these parameters and select a value that they think is reasonable to see what kind of impact that will have. So let's first have a quick look at a data model and the data itself. So in the data model, you see we have one table with the search interest, which comes from Google Trends, which is connected to a date table, custom date table. And we have a table with already some metrics set up. So here we have measures for search interest in Power BI, click and Tableau. Now let's have also a look at the data itself. Now here we have one data point for each week, starting from 2016 all the way up to the end of 2020. And we have data for different regions worldwide, but also US, UK, Germany, etc. Then we have three columns that show the values for search interest, one for Power BI, one for Tableau, and one for Click. I place these measures on a simple line chart and you see here in yellow, we have Power BI, then in blue, we have Tableau, and in green, we have Click. Place a slicer here at the top of my chart where I can switch, for example, to Germany, where you can see that Power BI is already more popular than Tableau. Now I want to make a forecast for 2021. Okay, so I have a date table that goes to the end of 21. So you see if I go here to my date hierarchy and then say show items with no data, then here in my chart, I see now also Q1, 2, 3, 4 for the year 2021. So let's now come up with a simple measure that gives me a forecasted value for next year. All right, so I'm gonna go over here and create a new measure. And let's call our measure search interest Power BI forecast. Now to calculate the forecast for next year, we can keep it simple and just take the value from one year ago and multiply that with a certain growth percentage. All right, so here I'm gonna use the calculate function. We already have the search interest measure for Power BI that we can use. And I just wanna move one year back. So I'm gonna use the date add function. And here we can use a date column. I'm gonna go one interval back and the interval is gonna be the year. Now this I then want to multiply by a certain growth percentage. So we can say multiply this by one plus, let's say 10%, 0 0.1. Now at the moment we show a forecast, not only for 21, but also for all the other years. Okay, so I want to still make an adjustment so that we only show it for 21. So I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna use a variable var forecast. Okay, and then we can say return. Now only if the year of the maximum date that we have inside of the filter context, so dim date, date. Now if this one is equal to 2020 or 21, only then we want to return the forecast. 
Now you see, that gives me the forecast for 21. However, the lines are not connected. So I can go back again and then go back to my if function and say like, if it's not the year 21, then take the search interest in Power BI, the actual values. You see, we have a line that nicely connects. However, then I need to still go to formatting, data colors, and then from here I can make the forecast the same color as the actual values for Power BI. And then I can go to shapes and then turn customize series on. And here we want to customize the series for search interest Power BI forecast. And I would like to have as a line style, the dashed line style. So let me do this now for Tableau and click exactly in the same way. So now that we have this, we can insert our parameters and use them to change the growth rate for each software individually. Okay, so let's go over here to modeling where you find the new parameter button. All right, let's click on it. Now here we have to come up with a name for the parameter. So we can call the first one Power BI growth rate percentage. Okay, now this as a data type, we can switch to a decimal number and uh, that goes from minus one to a maximum of one. And we have increments of let's say 1%. Now also here you can choose to add the slices straight away to your report, which I would do. And the default, let's first put it at uh, 0.1, 10%. All right, I'm gonna click on okay. Now when you create a what if parameter, a table is created in the background that uses the following function, generate series, which basically gives you the beginning point, minus one, goes until one, and then the step size of 0 0.01, and here it gives you all of the values in between. Now to figure out what is selected on that slicer in your report, there is a measure that was created for you, Power BI growth rate percentage value, which uses the function selected value. Now it returns a value when there's only one value in the specified column, otherwise it returns a different result. So only when there's one value, which we have over here, then it returns that value. And we can use that in our other measures. And that's exactly what we're gonna do now. Now before, in a forecast, we hard-coded the 10%. Now, instead of having that hard-coded 10% in there, I'm gonna make that variable by referring to that selected value in the slicer. So we can simply refer to that measure. So here we have the Power BI growth rate percentage value. And now if I make an adjustment here in the slicer, you see it adjusts inside of my graph. Now it still doesn't show as a percentage in this slicer. So let's go here to that Power BI growth rate percentage and then form it as a percentage with zero decimals. Okay, so let's now also make this uh, slider a little bit prettier. Okay, so I'm gonna drag it up a little bit, go here to general, and first of all, I'm gonna turn responsiveness off, okay? And I'm gonna adjust the colors a little bit and play around with the formatting so that we can end up with this. Okay, so let's do now again exactly the same for Tableau and click as well. So I've added now also the what if parameters for the Tableau growth rate and the click parameters, as well as the sliders I put on this report page. So now we can play around with the different growth percentages and see how it interacts with my chart. Now I do not need the legend anymore in my chart, so I'm gonna turn off the legend. Now you also see that for each what if parameter, you have a disconnected table. And these tables, they also show by default in the report view, which might not be something you want. So I would usually hide them. So go here to each table and hide that disconnected table. Now the only problem that I still have with this solution is that we don't have kind of a reference percentage that could be realistic. So therefore I'm gonna add three more measures and uh, that are gonna calculate for Power BI, Tableau and Click the growth rate that we had last year. So that we take that as a reference point. I already created this measure before, so let me just quickly copy it over and walk you through it. So I have one variable, search interest from one year ago, where I use the calculate function to basically take the search interest of Power BI, 
but then not for 21, but from the parallel period, which is then 2020. Okay, so I use the parallel period function there. And then I do the same thing for two years ago, and then I simply divide one by the other. I only want to do that when both the search interest from one year ago and two years ago is not blank. That's it, okay? So nothing crazy here. And then I can repeat this also for click and tableau as well. I can use now these newly created measures in the text box below the slices that we have, okay? So let's create a text box, place it underneath the Power BI slicer, and here you just simply write last year, colon, and here I want to have as a value the search interest growth rate from one year ago. So search interest growth percentage from one year ago for Power BI. I'm gonna format as percentage with zero decimal places. Then format it nicely. So over here I'm gonna put it in the middle, then give it a nice background color. Let's go for yellow. And let's give it a little bit of transparency here, 50%. Okay, I've added now the text boxes that give me the reference percentage, which is basically just the percentage growth rate from last year, so that we have just a reference point. Now, as you cannot put directly a filter on the text box, what you can do, however, is insert a slicer, and I select it over here, 21, and then just uh, go here to format, edit the interactions, make sure it doesn't interact with anything except the text boxes and then you can hide that slicer like this. And in this way, you have the text boxes filtered on the year 21. Okay, let's have a look how Power BI is doing relatively to the other two between different regions. So over here, I switched to worldwide first, and I'm gonna look at the reference point from last year, 18%. Let's put the slider there as well. For Tableau, the same. So I'm gonna go over here to minus 1%. And if we click, we have minus 27%. And you see that Power BI is slowly catching up worldwide with Tableau. Now, if we look at different regions, let's say we switch over here to the United States, and we also adjust the slices so that they correspond with the growth rates from last year, then Power BI might overtake Tableau in 21. Let's see. So then for the other regions, for example, United Kingdom, you see that the gap between Tableau and Power BI is just getting bigger and bigger. Now, if you want to play around with this file yourself, the download link is in the description section below. Now, as you can see, what if parameters are super useful, especially if you're doing scenario analysis or making forecasts for next year. And thank you again for watching. If you still have any questions, then make sure to put them in the comment section below. And if you have not subscribed yet, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. And I hope to see you in the next video.